Alrighty guys, welcome back to Star Wars Review. Today I'm reviewing The Mandalorian Season 3 Finale, Chapter 24, The Return, which was written by John Favreau and directed by Rick Pemua. It was released on April 19th, 2023, which I thought was an alright episode. Had a lot of fun action. I also enjoyed the ending and how it kind of sets up a uh, Season 4. But uh, there was some moments, more in the middle of the episode, that I just wasn't as into. Mainly I just wish it kind of went more into them which you know some of that stuff there's possibility it might return in you know a season four or other mandoverse uh shows and whatnot but right now i'm just kind of a little iffy on it hopefully it gets more explored and you know more in depth in the future and whatnot but for now i just wasn't that into it which i'll get into it more later but uh like I said, everything else was, you know, a lot of fun. There's a lot of great uh, Din and Grogu moments uh, of them together, which uh, I do feel like has kind of been lacking this season. So it was really nice to get all that, and I really, really enjoyed that. But let's just dive right into the episode. It picks up right where the last one ended, as uh, Bo and the other Mandos are kind of on the run in this underground area, running away from those Imperials, which we see Bo uh, call up Axe Woves, and tell him, uh, you know, what happened, that uh, Gideon's back and whatnot, which he's flying up to the fleet uh, to warn them, and, you know, their comm signal goes out, so they can't communicate anymore, which we then see back with uh, Din, who's being uh, taken away by some Imperials, and he starts to break free and isn't doing a, you know, bad job taking out those Imperials, but they start to, like, strangle him, so Grogu appears out of nowhere, kind of, Tap in the no button and uh, take some out, um, which, you know, he then starts to spray the um, back to spray on Din, which was cute, which, you know, Din tells him that, you know, he's okay and, you know, he to uh, help him up and whatnot. And he asks Grogu to uh, cut him free, which Grogu presses the yes button, which was super cute. But, uh, you know, Din then tells Grogu that he's uh, going to have to be brave as they're going to have to go after and take out Moff Gideon, you know, because if they don't, Gideon will just keep returning, which, uh, you know, Din tells him, you know, are, are you with me? And kind of Din nods his, you know, head towards Grogu while saying that, which Grogu then gives a little nod back, which is cute. I, I really love this moment. But uh, Din then calls up Bo, telling him that, you know, he's free and with Grogu and that he's going after Gideon, which uh, Bo, uh, you know, says she can't help right now because they're kind of stuck, and she also wants to get the others to safety, which the uh, one, um, it's calling them pirate Mandalorians, but I guess stranded, stranded Mandalorians would be the, uh, a better term, you know, one of them from the last episode, uh, says that he knows a place to lay low, which they start to head there, you know, to lay low, but, uh, we then see back with Gideon, who sees that, uh, Din has escaped, so he suits up to go after Din himself, which we then see Din and Grogu sneaking around, and Din calls up R5, asking him to uh, splice into the base and find uh, the location of Gideon's command center, which even though R5 is, you know, a cowardly droid, he flies down and, you know, does it and whatnot, while being a little uh, scared and whatnot. You know, I, I thought all that was cute, but he uh, gets uh, Din and Grogu the location, so they start to head there, but, uh, we then see Axe arrive back at the fleet and warns them of the incoming danger, which Axe tells them to all board, uh, the gauntlets and other ships and whatnot, and, you know, get down to the surface to help out Bo, while he stays aboard the cruiser and uses it as a decoy, which we see them all board the other ships and get, you know, down, or start to head down towards the, uh, surface, which, as they do that, we see all the ties come up and go after the cruiser, which Axe's plan works, as they just attack the cruiser. Which, I will say, this moment here, I do wish there was a little more to it. It is pretty simple and kind of quick. But, uh, we then see Dan and Grogu get to Moff Gideon's command center, which, to enter, they kind of have to go through those red doors. And, you know, Din doesn't have any weapons, so he calls up R5 to kind of control the doors. So only one can open at a time, which I thought was a cool scene. A lot of like kind of hand-to-hand -hand combat from Din and, you know, kind of using the weapons of uh, the Imperials he takes down. It was cool. It's also a hallway scene, which Star Wars has a lot of those, uh, definitely recently. 
But um, I'd say it kind of felt like maybe a scene you would see in like a John Wick movie. Obviously, you know, nowhere near as good as a uh, scene from a John Wick movie, but similar-ish to that. But, you know, obviously John Wick is, you know, for these type of scenes is amazing. Chapter 4 was great. I really loved uh, Chapter 4. But, uh, you know, this is Star Wars review, not John Wick review. But uh, during this scene, there are some comedic moments also with uh, R5 as it kind of runs into trouble. Some mouse droids, which was fun. But uh, you know, then eventually gets to the end and tells R5, you know, good job. Which then a whole squad of mouse droids comes after him. So he flies away. But uh, Din and Grogu then enter the area with all the uh, cloning tubes, which we find out the clones inside the t- those tubes are all of Gideon, which we see Grogu like lock up the one and kind of wakes up. But you know, Din uh, sets them to explode and you know they get out as uh, the tubes are blowing up. All that was very weird. I wish they kind of went more into it because it is a pretty big you know reveal and whatnot. But it's kind of just done real quick and they're kind of gone you know like that so I, I i just wish there was a little more into that but we then see back with a uh, bow and her mandos as they're kind of laying low in that in this uh underground area those stranded mandos kind of have been laying low at before which they're they were able to kind of grow plant life in this area which uh surprises bow but we then hear uh the the uh armor call them up telling them that reinforcements have arrived so we see them all head out for Gideon's base. They're all flying in their jetpacks. And then you kind of get to the base. And there's a big battle with all uh, the Mandalorians and all those Imperials uh, fighting. Which is fun. I will say sometimes it's a bit too much going on. So it's kind of hard to focus on uh, some stuff. But uh, back with uh, Dan and Grogu. They finally get confronted by Gideon. Who's very, very upset about over the clones. I guess, you know, the clones were able to use the one thing he can't use which is the force which is interesting i do wonder how all that worked i I just wish it kind of went a little more into this this is kind of the most information we got about gideon's clones but uh gideon then goes on about how Dan killed them before they could even take their first breaths which then Dan goes after him which you know they're fighting in kind of this hangar area which in the background we see all the other Mandalorians fighting the Imperials in the sky. But uh, Gideon is easily winning the fight. And then the uh, Praetorian guards come out. Which, you know, they're, they're probably going to kill Din. But Grogu comes out and starts spamming the no button. And so they go after him. While going after him, they're able to easily destroy the IG-12 mobile. And so Grogu uh, kind of has to hop around to avoid them or whatnot. But uh, Din and... Gideon continue to fight, and then we see Bo notice Dan in trouble, so she goes and fights Gideon with the dark saber, so Dan can go rescue Grogu, which uh, the kind of two fight scenes happen together. We see more of uh, Dan and Grogu with the uh, Pedorian guards first, which you know I really enjoyed it. Uh, you know we see Dan and Grogu kind of have to uh, work as a team to take out all three, which was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed seeing them. In an action scene, work together, you know, Din using his strengths, you know, as a Mandalorian and Grogu uh, using his strengths as a force user to take them out is a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. Getting in bow at this moment was kind of more than going out with each other, really wasn't much till later. We then see Axe is uh, taking that uh, the cruiser down and is uh, going to kind of just ram it right down into the base. To uh, blow it up, which, you know, he warns everyone about and whatnot. But uh, we then see, uh, you know, Gideon and Bo kind of come to the pause to uh, speak. Which Gideon just, you know, asks for the dark saber back. Which Bo refuses and starts attacking again. Which Gideon grabs her hand. She's, you know, holding the dark saber with. And crushes the dark saber, destroying it. Which I will say, I wish the moment felt bigger. But then again, I, I do like what the story has been trying to say about it. That rolling Mandalore isn't about this single weapon. So to kind of destroy it in such an unceremonious way works for what the story is trying to say about it. Which in the next moment kind of expands upon that as Gideon tells Bo that Mandalorians are weak 
once they lose their trinkets, which Bo says, you know, what makes Mandalorian stronger is them being together, which we see Dane come out and starts shooting at um, Gideon, which seems like they're starting to kind of get the upper hand and whatnot, which we see Axe in the cruiser is uh, now starting to crash it down to the base, which he does jump out and fly away, which makes sense. He doesn't go down with the ship, but, uh, you know, we do see uh, Gideon kind of start shooting at Din, and Bo kind of comes in with her shield to help him out. You know, Grogu joins in and starts using the force on uh, Gideon's uh, weapon and whatnot to kind of push it out of the way. So that's uh, cool, but the cruiser tank crashes down and causes a big explosion. Or all starts to, which we see Din and Bo kind of go and try to guard Grogu, which uh, the explosion seemingly kills um, off Gideon. Grogu then uses the force to create a bubble to keep, uh, you know, him, Bo, and Din all safe. And the fire eventually goes away and we kind of see them get up looking at the uh, destruction. Which the uh, final fight with Gideon was okay. I liked seeing Din, Bo, and Grogu work as a team there at the end. But everything with Gideon over really the course of these three seasons has kind of felt like a waste. And um, all three finales he... Hasn't really won at all. Uh, most of the time when he wins, it's more off screen or, you know, he, he doesn't win against Din at all. So I, I I feel like he's been kind of a weaker villain because of that. Obviously now there's all the stuff with his clones and whatnot, which I, I do think is obvious that's what he was trying to do and whatnot. I do wish there was a little more in this episode with them. But even if next season he comes back as one of his clones, I'm going to assume they're probably just going to end up losing again anyways. So, yeah, you know, really the, the character is carried by Giancarlo Esposito. He uh, makes him a good villain. But uh, everything else, he actually kind of just sucks. But um, I just wish he was better because Giancarlo Esposito is great in the role. I just wish everything else about the character was is better. But it uh, then cuts forward to some time later. We see all the Mandalorians at the uh, living waters in the mines of Mandalore. Uh, we see the armor doing kind of a thing with uh, Ragnar, Vizsla. But uh, Din then comes up with a Grogu asking the armor to make Grogu his apprentice and no longer a foundling. Which the armor says, you know, Grogu can't speak so he cannot uh, take the creed. Which Din says, you know, if his parent allows uh, it, then he can become a Mandalorian, which, you know, the armor says, you know, that is true, but Grogu's parents are far away, and, you know, they might still not even be alive, which, you know, in that moment, we kind of see Grogu looking all sad, which then then says, you know, he wishes to adopt Grogu, which, you know, in that moment, we see Grogu kind of look up at him, and he just seems so happy, I, you know. I, I I really love this moment of it uh, finally being accepted that, you know, Din is Grogu's father and now more official uh, that, you know, he's his uh, adoptive father. I, I really enjoyed that. But uh, the armor, you know, is like, yep, that's that's good. And, you know, Din is, or Grogu is now Din Djarin's son, I guess, and uh, therefore his apprentice, which the armor gives Grogu a new name, which is Din Grogu, which I'm like, what the fuck is Din's name isn't actually Din, it's actually Dejarin. Din is his family name, and Dejarin's actually his real name. That was uh, quite the mindfuck, but it, it, it was a great scene. I really, really loved it. But it uh, ends with uh, the armor telling Din, or I guess Dejarin, that he must leave Mandalore and uh, take uh, Grogu with him on his journeys. Which, uh, we then see Grogu look at the water and seemingly make a connection with the, uh, Mythosaur as it kind of cuts to the Mythosaur underwater, which I do wonder what's, uh, going on there. There's a quick moment with, um, all the Mandalorians, they're kind of reopening the Great Forge and they shout, uh, for Mandalore, but we then see the Din family head out on adventures. First, they go to, uh, the New Republic base on Adelphi where uh, Din Djarin speaks of Carson Teva about maybe doing some independent contracting, you know, for the New Republic, but not on an ofi- official side, like, the New Republic doesn't know about it, but, you know, he's still doing it, which, you know, Carson Teva is like, I'll, I'll think about it, which Din Djarin's like, 
you already thought about it. <laughs> it's fun, but you see Dane Grogu notice an IG assassin droid head, which later Din Djarin uh, asks for it as a kind of down payment for his independent contracting, which we then see back on Navarro, where uh, Groove Karga gives the Din family a deed to a cabin outside of town, which they reveal they have a gift for Grief also, which IG-11 shows back up and is now back with that, you know, assassin droid head uh, the Jaren got earlier. And so now IG-11 is the new Marshal of Navarro, which I'm guessing uh, Cardoon, um, I'm guessing she's dead. Uh, I'm thinking she was one of the ones transferring Gideon when he uh, escaped. So I'm assuming she's dead. But uh, the episode then ends with the Din family hanging out on their new uh, or hanging out at their new cabin, which, like I said, I thought the episode was all right. It had a lot of fun action, a lot of great, I guess, the jarn with Grogu moments. Um, but uh, the middle of the episode was just a little too weak. I just wish there was more to it. Definitely with the reveal of Gideon having clones of himself, but then kind of just gonna get destroyed. I just wish there was a little more to that. And you know, with how Gideon's fate in this episode, I just wish he was a better villain than what we've gotten over these three seasons. So, I, I just wish the episode was a little stronger there. Uh, the episode was also pretty safe and kind of a little cliche in some areas. But, uh, obviously, the Mandalorian is always kind of being a little cliche. But, you know, I, I do think it's maybe a little too safe. Obviously, I guess the Dark Saber does get destroyed. But, like I said, that's kind of just like kind of unceremoniously done wasn't really a big deal so yeah but i enjoyed really the first half of the episode or not first half first part of the episode and then really the third part of the episode the kind of the epilogue i am a sucker for epilogue so i i really enjoyed it uh for instance like return of the king you know lord of the rings uh has a long ass epilogue and i love it even though it's probably like some Seems like people don't love it as much as I do, but I really do love it. I kind of just like seeing the characters after the adventure is over in a bigger way. Kind of just doing stuff. But uh, I also really like what that epilogue sets up for a fourth season. Kind of just going back to uh, Dan and Grogu's adventures or uh, the Jar and, and Grogu's adventures. You know, around the galaxy. This time doing work with the New Republic. So I am uh, really interested in that. But, uh, so far out of the three season finales for The Mandalorian, this is probably my least favorite. The season one finale is probably still my favorite. Um, season two, I'm, I've am i never been a big fan of uh, CGI Luke Skywalker. So, uh, you yeah. know, a lot of the stuff surrounding CGI like Luke Skywalker I really enjoyed in the season two finale. But I, I will say I, I still enjoyed it better than this season finale. And I would say the season two finale had bigger emotional moments um obviously the, the moment between with uh, Din uh or Dajar and adopting Grogu I really enjoyed and really was an emotional scene too in this episode but all in all my grade I'm just gonna give this one a B so yeah but um I'll do a, a full season three review soon so you can check it out then but in the meantime check out my reviews on the first seven episodes and everything else I do but I've been sorry you know you guys in the uh, next one like stars in the galaxy. What are we? What do we stand for? Being a Mandalorian is not just learning about how to fight. 